Okay, everyone, so welcome again to another lesson in our PHP course here. And the next topic that we will be discussing is quite exciting, and it's a pretty cool feature that we will try to include in our project here, and that will be the use of the include and require statements. So these statements will be allowing us to include files inside of other files. And it's going to be really, really helpful, especially if we want to go and try to reuse some of the content that we've already written. And we want to include some of uh, same PHP code that we've written, HTML or text on different pages of our website that we're trying to build. Let's go and add a footer section here. And let's add that footer section, some content. That's a uh, copyright. If I can type it correctly. And let's add some styles. Let's first check on the browser. So we do see here that we do have the text. We can try to adjust that. Uh, let's try to put this in a header here. Header. Let's put the navigation inside of that header. Let's go put all of this in that header element. And let's have a header. Say I want that to have a height of 80 VH. And then the footer will have a height of 20 VH. What are we going to see? Uh, and again, I'm not going to be too focused on this because we are not going to be we do see here copyright at 2024, right program dev, but the height doesn't seem to be working correctly. And the color. Okay, I just restarted my browser. I think the cache, cache was the one that's having an issue. So now we can see that we do have the text here and we can do some stylings there just to look at the color white. And let's have text align center. And let's go proceed to our page and see. So I won't be too focused on the aesthetics, but I want to show you here the concept of how to use the include and require statements. So we do have four types or different ways on how we can try to achieve utilizing the include and the require statements in our PHP projects. So the different ways on how to do that, let's just go down here. Let's have a main element. Let's just add some content here just so at least include and require statements just so that we'll have something to see. Let's also add some basic UL here that will showcase. Just go uh, some of the ways we can use the include statements. We have include, include once. We also have require and require once save that so i just wanted to at least have some content here that we can try to see uh, as if it's an actual site right and now the first thing that i just want to demonstrate here in using the include statement and the required statement will be let's go back to our code base here all of this are ways on how we can try to include and execute external files in PHP, in a PHP script. So they are primarily used to modularize our code and promote code reusability. And there are some differences, although there are some differences when we try to use the include, include once, the require, and the require once. So the first thing that I just want to talk about is the include statement here, which is going to be used to include a file in our script. So let's say I would want to have, a, on the same directory, I want to have a header.php and I would want to get some parts of the header here and I'm just going to put that here and then we would want to include that header.php by using the syntax from where we use the PHP tags and then let's have that include statement 
keyword we want to use the header dot php file let me just first comment this out and let's go back to the browser just to see we no longer have the navigation section and the header section in our page and what i'm going to do let's try to use that include keyword and then let's try to refresh we now have that back and the good thing about this is that we are trying to create let's say for example this is going to be a standard header for all of the pages of your site we will have a navigation from where we will go through each of the different pages and they will have all the need for that drop down menu that we usually use to go through each of the pages that we have here so we'll have a standard header a standard footer or a menu file uh, for the different pages that we have and if we wanted to just go and update the header we can just go to this header page and we try to add some content that we can try to update as we try to work on improving the website so you will see now the index.html file will only need this include the header.php which is going to be on the same directory parent directory and we're able to access whatever content we have written inside of our header.php here so let me just go back to the browser just as a proof of concept you will see it's all still here we can still go to control structures and we still have the footer section set up in our index.php file so let's say we want to also go and try to create a let's just say i want to have here inside of our index.php or let's just first add this up or i'll add this in our pure php or let's just put that here in our output php and i want to have that navigation also here let's say i wanted to include that in header.php in our output php let's just see warning include header.php fail to open stream no search file directory on line 10 so that means we'll need to it's giving us an idea that we're having a difficult time finding that file so i think we'll need to go one directory up perhaps set to check and we now have the navigation bar here set up for us but we're encountering some error on how it's getting displayed because we don't have some content here that is also inside of our index.php file so i think we'll need to copy the script here and that's where we can try to add this footer section perhaps uh inside of our output statement from where we will have this scripts then let's go to let's have a php script here that will contain include footer.php and we know that, that file is still not yet present so if we go back to our home here let's refresh we're getting an, a warning it's saying that the file is missing on line 26 fail to open stream no such file or directory in the index.php file it's giving us a warning that we don't have such a file located in that index.php file so let's have to go create a footer dot php let's put the content here and let's see if that will solve that issue so we now have that footer available uh, in the index.php file so if we go to our output statement and we wanted to have that i'm just going to go get this include footer.php also and let's see are we going to be able to fix the issue that we encountered when we get when we got here uh warning include footer.php is not working correctly so that means we'll have to fix the path similar with what we did with the header we want to set up a relative path let's go refresh and now we have that script copyright in here so we do see that the stylings are not yet working so let's try to do some troubleshooting here so we do have the php of course we can also fix the intention for some of the code that we've already written here and we want to keep the title but we want to keep and let's just go here and i, I would want to go get this doc type here and let's have let's just for proof of concept here head.php 
and I just want to get the top part of this page and we want to also put that in the output so this time this is no longer going to be needed but we can have an include that will contain access to that head.php for example and of course we want to correct the path save that so we'll just fix the issue from where the bootstrap is not working correctly and the navigation is not being displayed correctly and we do see that it is working but we're still not yet able to implement the styles so perhaps what we can try to do here let me just go get this first and then inside of the head.php i'm just going to put the link relation styles here and in here just for testing out i want to see if this will work correctly if we have it in that manner and let me just also put a link to the home header here or on the head header.php i think we don't have a link to the home page let's just go to index.php so you would see uh, we just need to update the header.php if we wanted to update some parts of the code that we've already written here and let's try to see if this will work and now it's not found so let's try to have a relative path to index.php we want that to be one folder up and let's see if that's going to work and that is working so if i go back to echo we do have that that Apart from where we can see the lessons, we can go through or we can go to home. We have that working. So we do have the link working. And if we go back here and output statements, let's see here. I think we have to also have this one folder up, CSS styles and refresh that and we now have things to know about the echo print statements echo statement this is an echo statement with parentheses and we have the same implementation of the css now so i hope that that gave you an idea on how to utilize the include statement we did see that we separated some sections of our index.php so that we can go and try to create some new files that will be containing some of the content that we wanted to be displayed on different pages in our website so we just maximize the use of the php tags and the include keyword for us to and correct relative paths of course this is also essential so you'll have to think in advance on how you would be setting up the links to your folders and your files when you're working with with the paths to your specific files and we can also see here that we just separated the footer the head and the header so that we can also implement the styling and the navigation inside of our output statements that PHP page. One thing that we can also try to do here is that if we wanted to, let's say, for example, have a variable dot PHP file, and that will have some variables. And this is just going to be a pure PHP, so I'm not going to close it anymore. Let's just say red, and then this one will have car, and we call this Toyota. And then can we try to implement the same concept so here in our index.php i just want to go and use a paragraph and what is your car brand and color then let's have here a php that will be used to include the variable dot php and as a second statement we want to echo out i have a what are we going to expect to be displayed or how will this be displayed on the browser so we just added some paragraph element and then a script that will be calling that variable dot php that we just created and we didn't close it 
uh, as I've said in the pure PHP, if it's just pure PHP, we can actually skip closing it with a closing PHP tag. And we just included that variable dot PHP and echoing, we want to echo it out uh, with some string data type with the variable declarations that contains the values here. So let's try to see if that will work. And I'm just going to go back here. What is your car brand and color? I have a red Toyota and it's still working. So now let's try to talk about this include once. This is going to be similar with include, but it will be checking if the file has already been included before so that it won't be included again. And it will be helping in preventing multiple inclusions of the same file. So let's say, for example, you have a PHP config file here. So we would want to have, let's say we want to have some sort of a config file. Include config.php. And that config.php, we can try to, if we say include once, we just want it to be included once. And that config file here, we just want that, let's say for example, we have that config file, PHP. And of course, this will not be working because we're not going to be working with databases yet. But just as a, let's say we want to have a database host and we're working on the local host. And we have a database user. You set up your username and we have a database password. And we're going to set up a password for that. And of course the database name or DB name. And then we don't want this to be redeclared multiple times. So we just want, uh, or we don't want it to be included multiple times in inside of our index.php file. So we just want to include it once so that it will not be called or so that it will not be included again. And this will be helping us prevent issues of redeclaring functions or variables when we are using the include underscore once keyword. So here in our index.php, let's just try to test echoing out database post. And then let's concatenate that database host here. And let's have a line break. Echo out database user. Database user. And let's see. Go back to our browser. What are we going to get? Warning. Undefined variable database user. On line 11. Database user. Config. That's because we made a mistake there. So let's have to just, okay. Database host, local host, database user, username. We do get those information getting printed out. Now, if we try to go and include once again, the config.php file here, it's just going to be ignored and the variables inside of it are not going to be redefined. This behavior will be ensuring that we do not run into problems with redeclaring variables or functions. So just have that in mind. Now, if we are going to work with the require statement, now let's try to go and check the require statement here. And that would be if we try to go and have a statement here that indicates that we want to have a require, test require.php. And we know this doesn't exist in our directories, right? So what kind of error message are we going to get and are we going to see if we will be using that require statement, you would see it's giving us a fatal error. Instead of just having a warning, it's just giving us a fatal error and it's actually stopping the script from running. I cannot scroll down anymore to look for my footer section. But if we go and try to use the include here and we have a missing file, you would see that it will still be running the script, but it will give us a warning that there's an issue. So require is just similar to include, but it is a lot more stricter. When the file is not found, a fatal error is going to be issued and the script execution is going to be stopped. So you would see in the require statement, it was not showing us the footer section anymore. Unlike when we use the include statement, you will see the fatal error is being shown here. And it is really recommended when we are including a file that's very crucial for the script so that we will not be able to proceed without that, spe that specific script. Now with the require once, it will just be doing the exact same thing. We'll be having a fatal error and it will also be similar with the include once. 
it will also be if you try to test things out this should also be prompting us with a fatal error and it will also be allowing us to make sure that the file was already included previously and it will not be included again so similar with the include once statement so that's the coverage of this lesson. I hope you got the idea and you were able to follow along with what happened during our exploration on how to set things up and how we can try to modularize our, our sections in our PHP website here. So just as a quick recap, so we talked about include and include ones that we used if the file is not going to be critical and we want to continue our script execution but we want to make sure that there's some sort of a uh, warning message that will be shown to us and we use the require once or the require statement if we want to go and make sure that this is a very crucial file and we don't want the script execution to continue if it is not found and we usually use the once keyword this once keyword when we want to avoid multiple inclusions of the same file so that we can prevent naming conflicts or redeclaration of functions and classes so just have that in mind and I hope you got the idea here and thank you and see you on our next lessons.